Ladies and gentlemen, the following episode is scheduled for one fall. Coming down the aisle are your hosts of In The Click, Baby Huey and Brian Pronick. What's up, everybody? Baby Huey here, and joining me once again is my tag team partner. It's Tim from Pro Wrestling Unlimited. What's going on, man? Not much. We had a lot to talk about today. A bunch of stuff has gone down since the last time we talked. I know. It, it's <laughs> it's just crazy how much news and just topics, talking points, things happen throughout the week, especially here we are post-WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. A month uh, WrestleMania has been gone or has, has happened, what, a month ago? But so yeah. much is going on still. I mean, no wonder, and this is me just rhetorically speaking, no wonder there's so many, like, wrestling shows, doing daily shows. There's always so much to talk mm. about. I, I Like for me, like I'll watch an episode of Raw or SmackDown or NXT, and I'm like, man, I need to jump on a microphone right now and talk about it. Right. It's But, you know, I, I'm such a busy guy with work and everything else. It, it's, you know, I'm trying to play always catch up. And I know um, it's been what, a couple weeks since we've done an episode. So a lot of stuff to catch you guys up on. So we're going to talk some news. This episode, we're going to talk about the highlights from Raw and SmackDown. And as we mentioned before, there is a WWE draft coming up starting this Friday on SmackDown. So we'll give our predictions of people, which superstars from both brands and NXT should go where. So we'll have some fun with all that stuff. Uh, But yeah, Tim, though, thank you again for making the hot tag, filling in in for Brian tonight. Uh, But yeah, we have a lot, a lot to talk about, which is exciting. It's uh, yeah. I'm always a big fan of the draft when it happens because you can just have this fantasy talk of like, oh, so and so should go here and there. What if this happens? And it's just a lot of fun. And plus, we got a new championship now. And there's, there's so much, yeah, fun stuff to talk about. So <laughs> let's just jump right into it. So, all right. So, first things first, some news, which uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think how, like, I was before we hit record early, I was trying to think how I want to sum this up, but. Man, is it what I think you're thinking? Yeah, CM Punk. I mean, this guy, <laughs> he I, I've seen the word um, agent of chaos. Is that the term or? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, what's the other term I heard? But he I think he just likes the attention. I think he likes stirring the pot and creating controversy any way he can. And every week now, I just feel like there's a new story about him. So um at this point, CM Punk, he really reminds me of remember like Lindsay Lohan, like what, 10 years ago on TMZ <laughs> yes. or, or the Kardashians or the Paris Hilton. Like it felt like every week something new was going on with these celebrities or if you want to call them a celebrity at the time. But, you know, pre influence world that we live in where it seemed like every week they were doing something and they're on TMZ and mm. and being documented and talked about and all this gossip and news and and rumors, all that stuff. But you know, here we are in 2023, and I feel like CM Punk is the modern day version of that in the pro wrestling world. And now it looks like he's uh, uh, visiting em- uh, visiting enemy lines or enemy territory. So, can you fill us in just kind of the details of CM Punk uh, backstage <laughs> at Monday Night Raw yesterday? So, I've said for a while now. When I'm not home is when shit hits the fan. Because I was at my son's baseball practice yesterday, and I start getting all these messages. Hey, uh, Punk's at the building. Punk's backstage. What? Where's this coming from? And it's like, well, here's something from Brian Alvarez. Here's something from Mike Johnson. And the word was, first. the first one I saw was from Brian Alvarez. And he's like, CM Punk was backstage at Raw and asked to leave by security. Yeah. Then a video surfaces, it's maybe 20 seconds long, mm-hmm. of him and Tamina in the parking lot together. Like, what? And, like, he says something to her, he points towards the building, and then she, like, walks away and, like, disappears. Yeah. It was like, what's going on there? Then we hear that he had a conversation with the one person he was seen speaking to was The Miz backstage. Mm-hmm. And the big thing to note was he had some sort of a conversation with Triple H. And it's like, okay, that's odd. Mm-hmm. What is that all about? Because uh, back in the day, a lot of people were like, oh, why would he want to go back and work for Vince? Vince fired him. Vince wasn't the one that hated him back in the day. Triple H did not like CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Triple H sent that FedEx 
on his. Remember who was working talent relations then? Triple H sent that FedEx on his wedding day. It was uh, wait, talent relations. Wait, was it? Oh, no, 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 talent relations. No, Triple H was like, never uh, mind. I'm wrong. I think I'm wrong. Triple H was in charge of recruiting. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, like, yeah, never mind. I'm, I'm wrong. That was Johnny Ace. <laughs> okay, yeah, Johnny Ace. Still, he was still kind of dabbling in that. Yeah. In that corporate so, world. Yeah. yeah. So then word comes out today from PW Inside. Well, actually, Meltzer last night mm-hmm. was very cryptic. Like, Dave did not want to say things that he knew. Yeah. Basically, Dave was like, you know, I can tell you what I asked people I thought and was told I was right on. But then, then people are just going to come at me saying that I'm wildly speculating because they always say I'm wildly speculating. But I'm just going to say that what I was, what I predicted this might be, I was told it is. But that's all I'm going to say. And then he said that Punk was not even in Chicago over the weekend or anything. That Punk was in Florida, flew to Chicago Monday with some of the roster. And then that mm-hmm. brought up a lot of other questions. What the heck's going on? And according to PW Insider. They noted that Punk did some MMA commentary over the weekend in Tampa Mm -hmm. and just happened to be on the same flight as producers and wrestlers and so forth. Well, that was not on purpose that he was on the same flight, it seems like. It's just coincidental. Now, why he was there, we still don't know. According to, I think it might have been Fightful. They said people that they spoke to thought that maybe this was a publicity stunt by Punk to get his name out there even more before Tony announces his return. But then you also have Meltzer saying that last year when at the end of the year or so forth, when it was unclear if he would go back to AEW, he had told people he would not mind going back to WWE. So it's like he's got time on his contract. Tony's not going to let him out. As we know, Tony needs him now. Like, needs him for this collision show on Saturdays. Mm-hmm. So any kind of, oh, I'll just leave and let the elite be happy, that ain't going to happen. So, yeah, for, so everything we know is he was there for less than 30 minutes, 20, 25 minutes. He spoke with Miz, Tamina, Triple H. I heard, so, what was, I heard Baron, Baron Corbin as well. Yeah, I didn't hear that one. Okay, yeah, I forgot which which uh, side I saw that, but I think, yeah, gotcha. Baron, Baron Corbin, apparently. I was like, what? Why him? But I heard yeah. about The Miz as well, but, man. I just want to know what that Triple H meeting was about because uh, last time they were said to be anywhere near each other, Yeah, it wasn't good. Well, and then apparently, uh, mm. I guess they talked, and then he asked if he could stick around, and then Triple H said, well, let me go check. And then head of security told CM Punk, Vince said you had to leave. Yeah, I think that came from Fightful. Okay. Whole Vince well, Vince said he, uh, Vince made the call that he had to leave or something like that. Now, do we know, was Vince on site at Raw or this was like he called Vince like in Connecticut or wherever Vince was at remotely? No, Vince was virtually there all day. Vince made a bunch of changes to the show. Yes, which we could virtually. get into that in a second. Yes. So, But he was not actually in Chicago, but no. he was virtually connected or remotely were. Yeah. What is that? Do you think it's like a, a big screen, like a Zoom call that's just on for hours on end? He just <laughs> been sitting in his office with a webcam on him, and then people pop in. That'd be when funny. They want. Like That'd be it's funny. like the eyes. He's like the Wizard of Oz. It's, it's oh like, lord! It's like they got the big office where you know they you know uh, prep and come up with the storylines and finalize stuff. But like Vince, you know, wherever the head head chair is, <laughs> Vince right. is a big TV screen on the wall sitting there. And you just talk to Vince on there on the webcam. But uh, I just funny. Like, I wonder, like the Triple H, I would love to be a fly on the wall of that conversation. Like, oh, how yeah. long was it? Was it like yeah. 30 seconds, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes? What did they actually discuss? And then like the Triple H go walk away and like, OK, <laughs> I'll go check. But he probably told the head of security, like. And say, Vin, say Vince wants the, him to go, just kick him out. The word was everything seemed fine and normal, cordial. Okay. Nobody was like, oh my God, what the hell is he doing there? Nobody, like, nobody was, no tension, no nothing. Everyone, like, everything just seemed like it was cool that he was there. Okay. And then and the funny thing is, I've seen a lot of people on Twitter going, if that was anybody else in AEW, they'd be fired. It's like, <laughs> do they not know Ricky Starks was at the Rumble with Cody? Yeah, and then, you know, Dolph Ziggler was backstage visiting his brother at an AEW show. Andrade was at Mania all weekend. Yep. He was at the Hall of Fame and 
WrestleMania with Charlotte. Mm-hmm. There's another one. Who else was recently? Um, who's friends with who? I'm trying and, to think. Oh, Buddy Murphy, maybe with Rhea? No. Maybe, but there was another one that I knew like 100% was Alice, there. Malachi. I can't with, remember. With Zelina Vega. Might have been that one. Mal- yeah, yeah, Malachi Black was on stage at the Hall of Fame. That's right. Yes, this is, yes, yes. Yeah, Malachi Black was there with Zelina Vega. So mm-hmm. it's. Yeah, the, the the paths have crossed each other, you know, from different companies. But what, like I said, I think CM Punk at this point loves the attention, and like I said, an agent of chaos likes to stir the pot. He really is like the Lindsay Lohan of TMZ back in the day. I think he just likes uh, 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 stirring the pot, trying to get some attention, get some noise going, and especially now that Dax Harwood doesn't have his podcast anymore. So I'm sure CM Punk's trying to find other ways to keep his name out there <laughs> right. right now. So it, it's just interesting timing with all the other speculation. We have a chance. We haven't had a chance to talk about it on this podcast right. about CM Punk's future with AEW. And we, we can touch on it real quick as far as the latest rumors are he's going to come back. Uh, was it mid June at that June Chicago 17th, 17th. So that that's a dynamite or that'd be a Wednesday dynamite. Right. Or is it uh, r- give me two seconds to pull up a calendar? Okay. So yeah, it, it's, that's going to make his return. So that would be the first Saturday show. Oh, okay. So, okay. So the rumor is AEW is going to get a Saturday show called AEW Collision. Right. And it's going to be more or less headed by CM Punk and I guess mm-hmm. all the people on the roster that he gets along with. So there's going to be a light brand split yes. on the AEW roster. And the rumor is nothing has been announced. They have a hold on the United Center that day in Chicago. Really? So they, oh. that's what Meltzer had said. I guess because, yeah, once they put tickets on sale, then it's kind of like an official announcement without doing it on they, TV. I mean, they did it that one. There's one show in Canada on a Saturday night that just says live television taping. So that was the first kind of hint of all this. But according to Andrew Zarian, as far mm-hmm. as this new win, uh, Saturday show goes, and mm-hmm. Meltzer has confirmed all this as well, which I okay. don't need Meltzer to confirm Zarian. Other people, sure. But. Andrew Zarian's very connected when it comes to the television stuff. Like, yeah. not just, uh, oh, I heard this from someone in AEW. When it comes, like, I heard this from a TV network. So he's hearing Saturdays, June 17th, TNT, which mm-hmm. I think is the bad move because TNT is going to have a lot of preemptions from basketball, mm-hmm. if not other sports as well, hockey. It's, so it's supposed to be what, eight to 10 as well? Eight to 10 every Saturday. And I'm like, oh man, do I don't have to not go out on Saturdays anymore? <laughs> Jeez, but then it's like what? What about Rampage? That really kind of devalues well, Rampage I, I, even I, more, right? But I meant it as far as like, oh, do I have to review this show every week now? Oh, okay, if especially it's, if, if it's supposed to be on the level of a dynamite. Because Rampage, yeah. I gave up a Rampage reviews <laughs> after about a month. I mean, I could do it, mix it in with my SmackDown review, but my audience—I'm going to say right here—the Pro Wrestling Unlimited audience, PW audience. Mm-hmm don't care that much about AEW stuff. Like my audience, when you look at my AEW videos versus my WWE videos, it's most of the time night and day. So yeah. it's like, I'll do dynamite every week. Cause there's good engagement there. And the fans mm-hmm. care about dynamite. Mm-hmm. But when I would talk rampage, like do it rampage SmackDown review at the same time, everyone's there for SmackDown, but then maybe they stay and listen, but the chat engagement is just so much down when I talk dynamite or rampage. So you That's do yeah. like you talk SmackDown do first. Yeah. No, I just only SmackDown now. Okay. Interesting. Wow. So okay. Hey. I guess real quick with the collision stuff. What are your thoughts on them launching a third show on cable network? And then the roster is gonna be a light brand split where it's gonna be like people that like working with punk will work there. Cool. And then non fans of CM Punk will stay on Dynamite. <laughs> so what are now- your thoughts on all that? That's the thing we don't know because what mm-hmm. if you what if Tony goes, oh well, I kind of want to push you, but I got no room for you on Saturday. You got to work, or I got no room for you on Wednesday. You got to work Saturday, and then they go, well, I don't want to be on the same show as this guy, or I don't want to. I want to be with these people. You know, mm-hmm. there could be that tension of why are you putting me over here when I want to be over here, or why am I yep. on Wednesday and not Saturday, or on Saturday? Mm, I don't know how this is all going to work, but yeah, Tony Khan has something tomorrow they're not calling it an announcement they just said we will hear from tony khan tomorrow on rampage or dynamite i just for me 
it's going to be interesting if they go this route of like CM Punk is Saturday night TV and the elite are Wednesday night. It really right. is kind of dividing the locker room, like almost like a little bit of like a silver war, maybe. But my other concern is if CM Punk gets like a full Saturday night dedicated for him and his buddies, I just wonder, will that kind of inflate his ego even more that like I can run this place? Like I have Tony Khan in the palm of my hand that he loves me so much. He wants me to stick around that he's going to, is going to give a whole show, a whole night dedicated to me and my buddies or, or the roster that likes working with me. So, well, you want to, you want a somewhat, I don't know if I should say this because I've only had it confirmed by like two people kind okay. of scoop. Mm-hmm. Bucks have been writing television the last three to four weeks, or at least helping more write television than anybody else ever has with Tony Khan. Which, and- I could see that because there's been aspects of that's been a little bit better the last couple of weeks. I haven't had a chance to do a full since full, March is what I was told. I haven't been able to do a full blown dynamite review lately, but there's been aspects where it's a been a little bit better storytelling in some aspects. So I don't know. Yeah, if basically that's- what I was told was bucks have been overly helping write television since March. And then I had mm-hmm. somebody else also say, yeah, I heard the same thing. Interesting. Okay. Well, as we've seen on TV, we got the elite versus Blackpool combat club. We got Adam Cole and Chris Jericho stuff going on. And then we got the four pillars storyline kind of playing out as well. So they're starting to build up some better long-term storylines leading up to double or nothing. Mm -hmm. So I, I could see how maybe there's been some influence on Tony Khan to kind of help create some better storylines. So, I mean, he's going to need to do something when he's writing dark, dark elevation, dynamite ring of honor rampage. And now collision that's six shows. And then on top of Vince, Vince never, even that I can recall did six shows in a week. And that's not even counting battle of the belts and the pay-per-views when that happens, when those time on the calendar. So don't even get me started about, August, September, when they're going to be basically booking two pay-per-views back-to-back weekends. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, uh, and yeah, yeah uh, uh, um, Forbidden Door as well. Yep. Like, all that stuff. No, I'm with you. It's like, I don't know how Tony Khan does it. Stays up He's all got the day soccer night. team. He's got the football team. He's got a sports analytics company. Yeah. I'm with you, man. I'm 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 baffled at his workflow and how he keeps. At it least up. he doesn't have an obsession with working out like Vince did, because then he'd really be busy all the time. <laughs> Calling his staff at 2 a.m. to start working <laughs> on stuff. But yeah, so we could talk more about maybe CM Punk and the Saturday show once that is officially announced right. at some point in the coming weeks and maybe the long term effects on the AEW roster. But for right now, CM Punk backstage of Monday Night Raw do you think it's just a simple, yeah, it's just him trying to get some buzz for himself and, and, and or do you think he really wants to come back to WWE at some I mean, it's point? Possible. It's possible. What I think could have happened because according to PW Insider, him being on that flight with a bunch of WWE people was not on purpose. It was a, hey, you guys are flying to Chicago because you got to go there for a show and I'm flying home from a show I just worked. So maybe, and this is just me spitballing off mm-hmm. the wall. Maybe there were so many people that he spoke to on that flight that he was like, hey, that's cool. And then they were like, oh, other people have been asking about you or so-and-so. So he was like, oh, maybe I'll just show up, pop in and say hi really fast. Maybe yeah. it's all it was. Maybe it was all of I saw X, Y, and Z on the plane or at the airport and was mm-hmm. and was like, hey, maybe it'd be cool if I show up for 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. And then, you know, probably after he was told to leave the premise – Probably just <laughs> jumping an Uber and went back home at that point. Because yeah, word know. is he was told to leave by Jim Kelly, head of security by WWE of WWE. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll see what happens next, and you know with AEW and CM Punk, and when his returns there, and you know, <laughs> God, we'll bookmark this day if, <laughs> if and when if he ever returns to WWE. Was this the starting point, the right. Easter eggs of that stuff? So we'll see, man. It's it's very crazy. Um, what a time to be alive. I mean, I just wonder if we had like podcasts and pro wrestling websites and, and journalism and coverage and social media like this back in the nineties, how crazy would it have been? I mean, in the nineties, all-, all you had was the observer and the torch. And those were always what a week or two behind 
because they were, you got to get them mailed to you. Yeah. So yeah. Those are always, what, a week or two behind? I didn't really find wrestling dirt sheet stuff to like 2001, 2002. So mm. I couldn't even fathom how it worked without internet. I know. I, I mean, I was genuinely surprised when Scott Hall showed up on Monday Nitro as a, <laughs> when I was in middle school. I legit right. was like, oh my God, it's Razor Ramon. I, I, luckily, I wasn't following dirt sheets back then. So none of that stuff was spoiled for me. But uh, yeah, no, I can only imagine oh, yeah. like the amount of coverage that we see right now in present time with just the, the age of technology that we live in. I can only imagine what it would have been like back in the nineties. So it's always fascinating to me with all this coverage. So, um, all right, well, let's talk about the other big news from last night's episode of Monday night. Raw triple H had a big announcement and he delivered as far as he revealed a brand new WWE tile title, the world heavyweight championship. So he more or less came out, cut a promo, say, you know, Roman Reigns cut a deal that, He's able to, you know, work part time and be exclusively to one brand. And Triple H is not a fan of that. He wants a working champion that will show up every week, that will wrestle at all the premium live events, and decided that they, whatever brand Roman gets drafted to, the other show should have a world heavyweight champion there. And then he more or less revealed uh, the new WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So. A lot to unpack here with this announcement, the design of the title, all that stuff. So, Tim, for for the sake of the conversation, let's just start with your overall. Just you know, hey, what do you think of the design of the new WWE World Heavyweight Championship? So I like the belt. It's a little odd with the big WWE logo in the middle, but other than that, I really like the belt. I've always liked yeah. the big gold. This is based off the big gold mm -hmm. for all you people out there saying it should have been the winged Eagle. It should have been the winged Eagle. Hey, look who possibly designed this belt. Look who introduced this belt. What belt do you think is probably one of his favorites? The one that he held for three years on and off and the one that his idol held for how many years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what means more to triple H the winged Eagle, a belt he never held the belt that Rick never held. You need to think. What means a lot to him? Stuff Ric Flair did, stuff he did. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, no, I, I like it. You, can, you yeah. can go buy one right now for 500 bucks on WWE Shop. Well, I know, pre -order I, saw, it. I saw that right now. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm with you. Literally, all the, it's a modern day version of the big oh, yeah. gold belt, which I guess I'm with you. I'm a big fan of the big gold belt as far as, like I said, as a kid growing up in the 90s, watching the Monday Night Wars. Or, I mean, I love WCW and WWF at the time. And, WCW, that was their title, the big gold belt, which obviously evolved from the NWA. Well, don't forget, 92, Rick brought it to WWF television. Yeah, Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. I remember that. And it's like, oh, my God, you know, Bobby Heenan said, well, I'm going to have the real world champion. And I saw <laughs> it. I was like, oh, my God, what's that? The big gold belt, the WCW championship and right. all that stuff. But uh, I'm with you as far as I, I really like the design. I'm a sucker, and I think I said this before, I love world championships, title belts that have big gold plates. I'm always right. a fan of big gold plates. You know, if I can, I I, I prefer uh, circular plates. That's why like, I'm a big fan of MLW. I think MLW, mm -hmm. as far as all divisions, have the best-looking titles right now as far as all, all the major wrestling companies. I love all of them have big gold plates. It's just. So, so did you like the big, uh, what was it? The gift of the gods belt in Lucha Underground? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's my thing. It's like when you when you have belts that look like that, I feel like whoever wears it, you could tell, oh, my God, that's a champion right oh, yeah. there. Like, like for me, like I said, I, you know, I was born in the 80s. I was born in 83. So like growing up, you know, I, I the wing eagle was in my childhood and the wing eagle will always hold a special place in my heart. And I get, you know, why people love it. It's probably the most iconic title design, but you know, if you put a gun to my head and I had to choose my favorite title design, I have to go with maybe the big Eagle title belt from mm. uh, the attitude era. That's stone cold, the rock, all of them had, right. I love that one because it was literally the wing Eagle on steroids as far as <laughs> just the big gold circular plate. I loved it. Cause wherever stone cold had on his shoulder around his waist, the rock right. as well. You saw them coming. It's like, oh my god, that's the WWE champion coming down to the ring. It just stood out. So, I, like I said, 
I love the big gold plates. Even the undisputed title, the one that like Brock Lesnar and Eddie Guerrero had, that one, yeah. I don't think it's enough credit. That at the time, I was like taken back by it. But like mm. looking back on now, I love how big oh, it I really was. like that belt. Damn, and I think like, I think it doesn't give enough credit because for how little it was around for. I was surprised even, but that's the thing, the big eagle title. Literally, that was what just four years. I think it was not, it got, you know the night after WrestleMania yeah. fourteen. Because Stone think, Cold, yeah. If you think about it, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, S- Stone Cold was the last person to win the Wing Eagle because he beat right. Shawn Michaels WrestleMania fourteen, and that image when he you know throws his hands up, throws the belt over him. That's like really the only time he celebrated with that title because in the following night on Raw, Vince debuted the new title and he yeah. dropped the other one on Vince's foot. <laughs> And off off to the races that Stone Cold had the so, big eagle. That but, belt would have been around from ninety eight to two thousand two. I want to say two thousand two when they did the draft. Undertaker was no, was it Undertaker was? Because Chris Jericho, you know, won both titles. The Triple big H goal. was the champion that got it then. Yeah, and then Brock Lesnar. Triple H won at WrestleMania eighteen. Mm-hmm. Was the undisputed champion? They did the draft. And then he got the single, but they went to just the one belt. So, yeah. Yeah. Doesn't too. So that's really wild to me that the Big Eagle title only lasted for like four years. Mm-hmm. Like now looking back on it, like and, that's a short time frame. And then when you think about that, that next belt that we're talking about, the that was 2002 one. to what? 2004, Ooh. 2005. Yeah. Not that long. And Cena won it. Because Cena yeah. brought the spinner in. So that had to be in like two, that had to be 2005. Yeah, so literally less than three years. So, yeah. like two of my favorite designs didn't last that long. Now the Wing Eagle lasted for a long time. It was like like what eighty nine to ninety eight, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Whenever Hogan got it, uh, when he beat um because he got the the one on the green strap that had like the fifty million side plates. Uh, when Madison he beat Square Iron Sheik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he quickly they brought in the Winged Eagle. Well, there was another one in between, like a really short time frame. Um, yeah, like the globe. So that one. Yeah. I know on WWE shop, they referenced that one as the Andre the Giant belt for some reason. <laughs> yeah. OK, OK. So anyway, my point being, in my lifetime growing up, I always loved big golden plates. Mm-hmm. And so seeing this new design, I was like, I love it. Big gold just plates on there. Now, it's got a little shape different shape to it but like the current wwe championship and the universal championship i was never a big fan of because it's more like it's just the wwe logo and like barely any gold around it and you see a lot of just the strap and and or the blue strap or the black strap so i've missed seeing big gold plates and so seeing this again i totally dug i i i I know people are kind of complaining about the WWE logo there, but it's like, that's to let you know what company it is. <laughs> like, well, if you remember when WCW had theirs, there was no WCW logo at all on that belt. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which one? Are you talking about the one from... Uh, uh, the, one that, uh, the big gold uh, belt in WCW. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. said World Heavyweight Champion. Didn't say WCW, none of that. Because, yeah, WWF put their little... <clears throat> At the very logo top, at the yeah. top, yeah. They changed that part out when it came when they got bought out. Um, but no, I, I I dug it. Now, granted, like the the WWE logo logo, I know it's like silver. I was kind of maybe, mm. you know, on TV. I think it looks great because I think the way the silver and gold blend together is really cool. And then the glow part where it's like got that black detail, yeah. that's kind of cool. Now the render that's on the website, what you're referring to, where you can go buy online, you really see the silver stand out, and then the black parts stand out yeah when the lighting on it is done perfectly yeah i kind of wonder maybe they should have just all all that should have been just gold Um, i I think so but we'll see we'll see how it looks on the the waist of whoever the first champion is and so that'll be the real test i think but for right now my first impression i loved it i enjoyed it i like big gold plates i'm i'm all for this um now let me get your thoughts about them just debuting this title and was it necessary there's just been a lot of dialogue online in the last 24 hours about is this title necessary is it what's the point of having it you look at roman reigns he i guess can you still call him undisputed champion i know triple h referenced it but he's not the only world champion anymore because whoever wins this one now there's gonna be two world champions 
in WWE. So are they soon going to drop the undisputed part of, uh, of that language in the I description? Think, I think they will. I think eventually that title, because this is the world heavyweight championship. So I think eventually that title is going to transition into either just the WWE championship or what I think they would do the universal championship. So you have the world champion and the universal champion. Hmm. Okay. Let me ask you this. So the, I, this is one question. I think it was at Lance storm. I saw a tweet out now. Okay. So the one triple H debut last night is the WWE world heavyweight championship. Hmm. Which, you know, back in, what, 2002, 2003, when Eric Bischoff gave the big gold belt to Triple H, yep. and that was the World Heavyweight Championship all the way through, what, Daniel Bryan, WrestleMania 30, you know, holding up both titles. Yeah. So it lasted for, what, 10, 11 years, the big gold belt in WWE. That was called the World Heavyweight Championship. So mm-hmm. Lance Storm tweeted out, is this going to pick up that lineage? I was or, thinking the same thing, and I don't know. Or is this going to be a fresh start? From day one, I have a feeling fresh start like Universal. Okay, they could go back. They could. I wouldn't. I wouldn't hate it. I'd actually like if they went back to it. But I, I kind of feel like it's gonna be like the Universal title when all of the last draft they did in 2016 when they brought in a new belt. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if they'll make that announcement at some point. And and, you know, it's WWE. They write their own TV. They can retcon any of this at some point. So for right now, it didn't say, but I hope maybe they will combine it, the lineage with the World Heavyweight Championship in the past. I think that'd be kind of cool. I just uh, thought it was very odd. Both Triple H and Seth ripped on Roman for being a part-timer. They're really starting to lean into that. And they, they did that in the past with Brock Lesnar, John Cena, The Rock. Like, it's really interesting now they're kind of using that ammo towards Roman Reigns, mm. which... They, I mean, it's so such low hanging fruit at this yeah. point. We've we've heard them use that so many times, different wrestlers and stuff. I don't know. Um, that'd be interesting if they go with that route or anything like that. So, um, because the crazy thing was, Triple H was like, "This is the belt that's going to be defended all the time, everywhere, anywhere. Mm-hmm. A champion that doesn't need to have you acknowledge them because you will. They will earn your acknowledgement. They don't need to ask for it. Like." Damn. My other thing too with this title is, you know, uh, what people were asking or, or, or talking about this last night, as far as is this going to water down Roman Reigns' title reign? As far as no. Okay, for me, if should Roman, do you want to see Roman? maintain having both titles, walking around with two belts, oh. or do you want mm. them to? fuse them together and give him a new belt design, a separate belt design. I think he'd be fine if he just keeps the black strap belt. Just the one. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I wonder maybe we'll get an announcement on SmackDown. I'm just guessing. But it'd be kind of cool maybe to kind of separate him. Like, okay, you're still right. on your on your way to 1,000 days. Or maybe when he hits 1,000 days. Well, there's there's he will hit 1,000 days. That's not even a question. That's yeah. his Audi show. So I wonder, will they give him a presentation of a new belt design for him. Like something I mean, it's, new. It's very possible. I wouldn't yeah. rule it out. And this kid say, this is There's the WWE. <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's the thing. Cause remember that wasn't like a fan made wing Eagle, big, des- like modern design well, or something. I believe those were actually put out by WWE back in the day. Oh, really? Like, hey, you see the rock with this brand new belt. Well, here's some other design ideas we came up with that didn't make it. Yeah. 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 Pitched, oh yeah. Pitched ideas that didn't make it. And it literally well, not just a winged Eagle, a full Eagle coming off that title. Oh, that's right. I saw that one. I saw that one. So that, I think it'd be kind of cool. Maybe in this process, not only is raw or whoever the opposite brand Romans on gets a new, the world heavyweight championship, but then Roman, right. Once post draft post Saudi Arabia show, whatever it is, they give him like a brand new title that's just dedicated to him and his current title reign mm-hmm. right now, an updated belt. So that way you get two new world title designs for both shows. So I think that'd be kind of cool. I, and I think it'd be kind of cool if they introduced that one for Roman, like a modern version of the wing Eagle. Cause so many fans yeah. want the wing Eagle back, but they could do a modern version of that 
and give that to Roman. So um, with that being said, I still want Cody to be the one to beat him yes. next year at WrestleMania because yes. that's the title he needs to go after. So I told you before we recorded, there is somebody okay. I want kept so far away from this new belt that it's not even funny. And okay. that's Cody Rhodes. Cody cannot be in the contention for this new belt. No, that's not the story. That will do so many things bad. Yes. A, it will already make this new belt look inferior to Roman's belt mm-hmm. because it is, uh, Cody couldn't beat Roman, so he went and took the consolation prize. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then in in turn, it also makes Cody look super, super, super... What's where I'm looking for? Less than equal. Less than loserish, yeah. even. Oh, yeah. he couldn't beat Roman, so he went and fought for a belt that had no champion. No. Cody, honestly, at this point, not even Mania next year. SummerSlam. Cody needs to be the one, I think, to take the title off of Roman at this point. The whole story went from, I want to do this for my father and my family, to I want to beat Roman for the belt. Exactly. So, Cody's got to be the one to take the belt off Roman. Let him get a thousand days in Saudi Arabia. And then you can go beat him. I don't know. Detroit in front of 40,000 people in Ford field at SummerSlam. That's my thing. It's like, I I think the story here is getting the title that his dad never won, which is the WWE title. The lineage is where is now connected to what Roman has right now. And now the part two is yeah he needs to get revenge and beat roman and be the one to dethrone him and you know if they want to tell the story of the next year he's trying to overcome all these different adversities to kind of really earn up that baby baby face sympathy that he's paying his dues to earn the, the title shot next year i'm all for that but yeah with that being said cody needs to be the one to beat roman to beat that and get that title the one that, that triple h debut last night yeah, I'm with you. Cody shouldn't be nowhere near it. There's yeah. no lineage there associated with his father. Even with him, there's nothing about that title that is appealing to him and his story. So he, mm. like, he should throw a big X. Is like, stay away from me. You're a curse. I don't want this. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, um, no. Far this so, thing. yeah, yeah. So I'm with you. I, he needs to beat Roman and beat the title that Roman has because yeah. that's the one that's the lineage is there with his dad and the story that he's trying to finish. So, um, we'll see, but but that's my thing. People are kind of concerned right now. The WWE Championship is so popular, or so over, or I guess what's the word? It's so meaningful. It hasn't been this meaningful in such a long time. True, but that's credit to Roman Reigns the way he's been booked and mm-hmm. you know beating Brock last year at WrestleMania. That the title hasn't had this much prestige in a long time. And now you introduce a world heavyweight championship on the other brand that the kind of uh, bring it down in quality a little bit. It's like watering down the levels, but I'm all for it. If the rumor is they're going to have a really firm brand split and like right. raw roster over here, these people are never going to cross over to SmackDown mm-hmm. for the next year. SmackDown is their dedicated roster. They're going to stay here. So, so it makes sense. In theory, there should only be four people going back to back brand to brand. The women's tag champs and the men's tag champs okay. should be the only ones, unless they split them titles off of Owens and Sammy. That's another question too, which I'm curious how this draft's going to play out with the tag titles and all that stuff. So, um, going back before we go mm-hmm. forward, going back to your question of do I think this could lessen Roman's belt? No, because when they brought in when Bischoff introduced the big gold in 2002 and gave it to Triple H. I don't think it lessened the belt Brock had on SmackDown at all. So that's why I don't think this is going to do it either. And for all the the hullabaloo people made when they brought in the Universal title in 2016, that didn't hurt the other belt either. I just think what's going to happen is when Roman shows up, he's obviously going to main event the show. So the world championship is going to be maybe mid card Mm -hmm. or whatever. Or I'm kind of worried because remember for a while when the WWE, when the world championship, the big gold belt was in existence in the 2000s, I felt like the IC title took a backseat and the US title took a a backseat because the big gold belt became like 1B championship belt level. And then therefore 
the IC title and the US title, the mid-card titles really took a back seat. So it was like the WWE Championship was like the number one title. Big gold belt was number two. And in the past, that spot has usually been reserved for the IC title. True. But now you have the big gold belt. Now the two mid-cards are going to take even lesser in quality. But here's, here's one other thing being, I don't know how true this is. This is something being rumored. Brand specific pay-per-views. So that way you don't have both world titles on one show. That's what I was going to lead into as far as <laughs> I'm glad no, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask you, are you concerned though with this world heavyweight championship that the IC title that Gunther has been doing an amazing job bringing prestige back to over the last year, the U S title Austin theory has been having a pretty good long run with it, but you got to give triple H credit on SmackDown. He's been putting a lot of time in that IC title, making it a big hmm. deal, main eventing SmackDowns episodes of SmackDown. The U.S. title really has become the number one title on Raw because Roman's hardly on Raw. Well, and yeah, so that's like the not big, by not by choice. Yeah, but but he's been trying to elevate that Raw title for the last right. year on Raw. So, which to that point, I saw a tweet yesterday that goes, "Oh, well, the U.S. title means nothing. It's just been on Theory forever. They never put it on any big names." And then someone tweets out a picture of Bobby Lashley with the U.S. title yeah. and mm-hmm. Seth Rollins with the U.S. title Ex- in the exactly. last year. Exactly. So. That's my concern as far as um, with with this World Heavyweight Championship, with those two belts take a back seat a little bit in, in quality or prestige. But with that being said, um, I, I, I think what the rumors are that Triple H wants to bring back brand exclusive premium live events. So yeah. what are your thoughts on that? And then the only time both brands will cross over are the big five pay-per-views. Royal Rumble, right. Mania, SummerSlam, uh, Money in the Bank, and Survivor Series. What are your thoughts on you know, uh, brand exclusive uh, pay-per-views again? So if we're doing brand exclusive pay-per-views, it all depends on how many brand exclusive pay-per-views do we get. So if we have five, say, pay-per-views throughout the year that are going to be the big ones that everybody's on, like you mm-hmm. just mentioned, then that would leave what? I do my math right. Seven, seven, yeah. Let's see. I mean, that's an odd number. Mm-hmm. Or do we go and we do some months get two pay per views, one for Raw and one for SmackDown in the same month? That's what they did, like in what twenty sixteen to was, yeah. That's what I was going to bring up as well. It was only like two years or so they did it like that, but yeah, it was really like two pay per views a month, which was crazy because literally every two weeks it felt like there was another pay per view. Right. Like, you know, which is cool. And it's great with, you know, the Peacock WWE Network era because we're not paying a, you know, arm and a leg for 50,000 pay per views. We just pay $9.99 or in some people's case, free with their Xfinity. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I think if they do brand exclusive premium live events, I would prefer one, only one pay-per-view a month, but then you okay. alternate one month is SmackDown. The next month, raw next month, SmackDown next right. one raw. I think if it, if, if I remember correctly, when they did like to almost two a month, like every couple of weeks, it was another pay-per-view. I just worry would they get burnt out a potential storyline. Now, granted, you know, well, Triple H did bring back a lot of people to fill up the roster and give it some depth. So you do have a lot of people that maybe give more screen time. True. But I mean, you also got to think you're not getting too, you can't get too burnt out if it's, it's not like SmackDown is on every other paper. Or it's not like you're doing two pay-per-views a month and all the SmackDown guys are on both of those. It's only raw on one, only SmackDown. So in turn, you should have four weeks between a raw pay-per-view four weeks between a SmackDown pay-per-view. Yeah, I'm just trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I get where you're coming from, though. I okay, because if you look at in Triple H's time, head of creative from SummerSlam to now, right? He just had one pay per view a month, and both brands or rosters were on there. What I liked it, it was almost like at the time, each pay per view, you know, SummerSlam, Extreme Rules, Survivor Series, War Games, Royal Rumble, so forth. If you look at all those pay per views. Clash of the Castle even like you could tell they were a big deal because it was at the time it was like the best of the best storyline wise getting featured they weren't trying to feature everyone they're only the the, the names that right. had the biggest storylines going at the time were on the pay-per-view Six so it made seven the, matches so it made the pay-per-views feel like more of a big deal it's like okay mm-hmm. the people on Clash of the Castle at that time these are like our seven biggest stories that deserve 
a pay-per-view match right now, everyone else. And then granted, not everyone got on to every pay-per-view. So there were right. some pay-per-views. We didn't see so-and-so for a while or for a couple months get a match, which I think kind of kept things fresh in rotation as far mm-hmm. as, okay, the people you might saw at Clash of the Castle were not at War Games a couple months later just because the rotation of the storyline. I get where you're coming from there, yeah. But you get what I'm saying? So it's like if, if I'm all for brand-exclusive premium live events, but I kind of wonder – if they should keep it one a month and just alternate SmackDown one month, raw the next month. And then that way you get the, it's a bigger deal. Like SmackDown roster gets every other month. Right. It puts more emphasis back on TV again, that the main events sure. on weekly television mean more because you're building up to the next pay-per-view. And so you got to fill up time downtime. But then again, I can see why some people might want but, I mean, paper. Look- Two pay-per-views a month because it's more screen time for everyone. Right, but look at NXT. They take longer to build up towards their pay-per-views, yeah. and then they, in turn, mean more. Absolutely. Oh, takeovers back in the day, which were every, what, two to three months? Those yeah. takeovers, the anticipation, the hype leading up to each takeover, I was so excited for because it's like they've been telling all these stories, and then it's like, all right, it's pay-per-view. This is the big deal. This is the, everything, all the stories coming to a head here. This is a yeah. big moment and, here. And if you have, say, one one month between pay-per-views, instead of four weeks, you got six weeks, throw a big match on a SmackDown. Throw a big pay-per-view caliber match on a Raw. Exactly. So I'm all for <clears throat> pre- a pre- or, excuse me, brand-exclusive premium live events, but I don't know. I, I'm kind of leaning towards do one a month, though, but alternate <clears throat> Raw, SmackDown, Raw, SmackDown. I'm worried if they do two a month two pay-per-views a month, one for Raw, one for SmackDown. I just worry, will it get kind of diluted? They'll kind of burn out some of the storylines and it'll be less emphasis on the week-to-week shows on what main events those shows. Okay, um, so I think I get what you're trying to say now, now that I'm yeah. you're explaining it more. Yeah. Are you trying to say that doing more pay-per-views would make television mean less? Exactly. So, okay, that's okay. There we go. You get what I'm saying? Because, yes. like, let, okay, let's say SmackDown, if it's every other month, like when I'm, saying here let's say smackdown gets a premium live event february and the next one won't be till april or may so you know you're building up to those pay-per-views but then you know raw is gonna have a pay-per-view in march so smackdown all their big big matches in between pay-per-views are going to be main events on smackdown so smackdown will still be must see tv so here's one problem with exclusive pay-per-views Mm-hmm. And one a month. We're getting two pay per views in May because mm-hmm. backlash. Yep. And a porter and a uh, Saudi show. So are the Saudi shows going to end up being brand specific, or do those need to be both brands as well? Mm, good point. Then you add two more there. Your five now turns into seven. <sighs> I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm. Uh, <laughs> but no, I. It, it, well, we'll see how Triple H does, it and we can obviously talk about it then. Hey. But. The good thing here is they've got people talking. It's not just like, oh, we know what they're going to do. Oh, we know what the norm is. No, it's now starting conversations in a good way and getting people talking about the brand and the company. And so, yeah, it's doing what it's supposed to do. You bring in a new belt and you start conversations. And that's the thing. I I, I think with this draft, I, I hope they keep brand specific, keep it firm. Like if you're SmackDown, you're on SmackDown for the next year. No right. crossover at all. Same for Raw. I'm all for if they do two pay per views a month, brand exclusive each show. If that gives people more screen time, but my mm. like I said, my only concern is: are you oversaturating storylines or burning through storylines faster, and then therefore it's going to be less emphasis on the week to week show? Right. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. And, uh, I had something, and I just lost it. Uh-oh. I had a brain fart there. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. No, 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 you're fine. Um, well, so with that being said, with the World Heavyweight Championship, early predictions, who do you think should win it? So, if he wasn't the U.S. champion right now, I'd say, screw it, go all in on Austin Theory. Really? Now, he can lose that title at Backlash, but then do you really want someone that just lost a title winning this big of a title? Interesting. Okay. But if you watched Raw after the title was announced, Mm-hmm. They kept it at ringside. Yep. Only three men actually acknowledged that belt. Austin Theory, Seth Rollins, and Finn Balor. Now, Theory and Seth 
acknowledged it verbally. Finn, in his match with Cody, glanced over at it a few times. Like, mm-hmm. ooh, ooh, what is that? That, that? that intrigues me. Cody didn't look at it and know nothing. Mm-hmm. Omos came out for the Seth segment, nothing. <laughs> Bobby Lashley, Bronson Reed, nothing when they were out there with Theory. So yep. there's a three guys to look at as potentially they didn't do that, you know, just willy nilly. Maybe Finn <laughs> did during his match, but it wasn't for nothing that. So I think this belt's going to Seth because Seth okay. is the one person that never actually, quote, lost to Roman in a title match. So in all actuality, if I just had to pick one person, I yeah. would like it to be Austin Theory because it's somebody new-ish mm-hmm. that you're really, boom, here's our new chosen one. But mm-hmm. if you look at everything as far as who's had, who's been protected the most when it comes to being at the top, might be Seth Rollins. Yeah. Other than Roman. And I can see Seth win the title. He says, I'm the, the best champion. Or I'm the number one champion in the company now. I got this new title. I'm the one who never beat Roman. Or sorry, I never lost to Roman Reigns. I could totally see him hamming it up afterwards mm-hmm. and really going in on, like, keep in mind, over a year ago, I never lost to Roman Reigns. So I'm the A champion. I'm the number one champion yeah. of this company. So I didn't really lose. Yeah. Like, so he can I totally play the match ish, kind of whatever. I didn't win the belt. I didn't get but- pinned. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I can see him playing it up. Other contenders, I I would not be surprised if they try to do a, a make good from what 2016, the Universal Championship, when they debuted that title and Seth versus Finn. I could see Seth versus Finn as the finals for this new. Do you title. redo the spot and everything? <laughs> Maybe I I. It's a little bit uh, different because let's see, Seth is kind of more baby face. Now Finn's more heel. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit role reversal compared Which to what is good because now it's not the exact same. Yeah. And it's definitely a fresher matchup now because They haven't really done much together in the recent right. years. Um, the but at the same other, time, we yeah. haven't seen any, because this is only introduced on raw. Yeah. No teases of SmackDown guys other than Sheamus and a picture of him with the old big gold belt. Hmm. So we don't know who from SmackDown's interested in this belt. I mean, there's so many. That's the thing. It's like you think of all the guys that Roman beat in the last couple of years. They're yeah. still with the company. They all are potential contenders now for this title because they were in the main event picture at one point or the other. Oh, so yeah. I can see, yeah, like. Uh, uh, um, God, I mean, you uh, easily got Seth Rollins, Finn yeah. Balor, Bobby Lashley, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre. I mean, if Triple H really is as gung ho on him as he says that he is, carrying cross, AJ Styles mm-hmm. is lingering on a return. Screw it, Randy Orton should. I mean, they say he could come back in the next couple of months. Who knows? Yeah, and that's the thing. And then mm-hmm. other guys who have been in the mid card scene who want to get elevated to a main event picture. Mm-hmm. Now they can do that, and that's right. what was the great thing about the big gold belt back in the I day. I mean, if it was me booking it and and I could really put exactly who I wanted to be the first champion, it would be Gunther. Mm. But they're doing the IC title story with him, and I don't want them to mess that up. Yeah, I like, want him to beat Honky Tonk's fine. record. But if yeah. he didn't have the IC title, like as much as I think it'd be cool to put it on Austin Theory, I think Gunther is actually of anybody in this company the perfect person to put that title on, to be yeah. the first one. I would love to see Drew win it at some point. I think yeah. Drew deserves a, a title win in front of an audience. I still, mm-hmm. that's like my one thing about the pandemic era that just, you know, frustrates me. It's just, I feel bad for Drew never getting that big moment in front of a crowd. So I want Drew to get that at some point, maybe not being the first champion, but at some point over right. the coming months, year, whatever, he can de- beat someone for that title and get that big pop in front of an audience. So, yeah, I mean, there's so many possibilities now. Like you said, Drew, Sheamus, Bobby Lashley would be a great choice. Um, uh, th- th- there's so many. And then those guys. Xavier who, Woods posted a video today saying, well, I'm going to be a singles champion in the next year. <laughs> Even Logan Paul kind of teased. Yeah. That t- he liked to see, you know, the eyeball emoji. the title that's supposed to be defended everywhere at any time on a part timer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I mean, there's so many possibilities. I mean, what if this man right here, AJ Styles, I don't know if you guys can use audio only probably, but <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing an AJ Styles t shirt. But mm-hmm. what if 
we haven't heard anything about AJ Styles since mm-hmm. he went down with his injury. Maybe Triple H goes, oh, it's March and you can come back. Well, let's wait till May because we're going to put the title on you because no one's going to expect it and nobody talk about that he's cleared or not cleared or this or that. Like, what if they yeah. just completely swerve everybody and go, oh, it's somebody that you haven't seen since December winning so, this belt. Yeah, so well, with that being said, they didn't say how they're going to crown this, right? All he said was, Roman's going to one brand, this belt goes to the other, and the champion will be crowned in Saudi on May 27th. Didn't say if we're just going to pluck two contenders, do a tournament. Because what, 2016, they did like a mini tournament where it was like yeah. semifinals and finals or something like that. I'm Finn beat remember. Roman. Yeah. I know Finn beat Roman on a Raw, and then Seth beat had to beat somebody because it ended yeah. up at SummerSlam, Seth and Finn. So that that's my thing is I know it was rumored supposed to be uh, King of the Ring and Queen of the Ring at Saudi Arabia end of May. Now it's that's off the books and now it's right. just Night of Champions. That's something you and I talked about last episode. So Night of the Champions is going to be the pay per view in Saudi Arabia. I'm all for if they do like some form of a tournament. So Same. even though they get rid of King of the uh, King of the Ring tournament is not going to happen there, they still have a tournament. But this time it's actually for the, that new world heavyweight championship, which I'm be all for. Even you and I were talking off the air. You think it'd be kind of cool. Maybe not like the full blown all the brackets, but maybe they do qualifying matches on Raw and Smack. Or excuse me. Well, okay. Early <laughs> prediction. We we assume right. Roman's going to go to SmackDown, so this title is going to yeah. be for Raw. So maybe you have qualifying matches on Raw, and then uh, you mentioned before we hit record that maybe the last couple rounds can be at Night of Champions. So well, that'd be cool. Kind of like. You know, you have to make you want to win this belt Well, you're working double in one night on to win the belt. You know, yeah, you got to earn like, it back yeah, in yeah. the day with King of the Ring. King of the Ring have the semifinals and the finals at the pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it'd be kind of cool also with. You know, people getting elevated to the main event scene for the world title that then other people in the mid card scene can then be elevated for the IC title or U.S. title. So I think. Potentially, this will free up a lot of you know uh, uh, members on the roster for chances for different belts to go after. So that's what, what I'm also kind of excited for. For this is potential storylines. Like I, like in my head, like Johnny Gargano, I feel like can be going after that IC title in the near future or something. Which is a little prediction right. of one of my uh, <laughs> draft draft picks where okay. it could happen. <laughs> so I got how they crowned the first Universal Champion. Okay, so. Seth was battling Ambrose over the WWE championship, lost it right before the draft or in the night of the draft or whatever. Ambrose gets sent to SmackDown. Seth goes to Raw. Because if you remember, Stephanie drafted Seth thinking Seth's going to win the belt tonight and we get the title. Didn't happen. So they bring up the new belt, the universal title, and they say Seth is automatically fighting for this belt because mm-hmm. he was our number one overall draft pick. Then they set up qualifying matches. There were two fatal four-way matches. Wow. Okay. First off, there was one that Finn Balor won, defeating Cesaro, Kevin Owens, and Rusev, while Roman Reigns won the second, defeating Chris Jericho, Sami Zayn, and Sheamus. Balor then beat Roman to move on to SummerSlam and challenge Seth for the for the Universal title first ever. Hmm, okay so it's gonna be interesting what they do here i hope they do a tournament because that'll yeah. be a great way to fill up television for the yes. month of may just create some storylines there build just, somebody up say yeah. maybe they do want to go finn again well they gotta build finn up because finn's been losing a bit yeah oh yeah lost the edge at wrestlemania yeah totally they gotta work on on finn here uh but yeah going back to seth rollins though He's got a match at Backlash against Omos is out of nowhere, which is kind of odd. But did you see his tweet about that? His the GIF he sent out. Which which one was it? Let me see. So I don't know if I seen it. They they announced the match and they post the photo on social media and he just does a Ace Ventura all righty then GIF. Oh okay okay let me see here. Like he didn't even know. Oh I see it yeah yeah oh my god. <laughs> so do you think this is just supposed to be a test for Seth like? I assume he's going to get the win over Omos and it's just, you know, it's going to be a win for him and kind of get him yeah. going before uh night of champions at some point. Right. I, I think okay. so as well. Okay. Um, all right. Well, like, there's a lot to talk about with this 
for the next few weeks, obviously, this world title, which I'm excited for just to talk about it and what's going to happen next. And which one opponents. month till they crown the champion. Well, one mo- from the time of this recording, one month and a day. So I wonder if they'll do a thousand day celebration for Roman in Saudi Arabia as well. So we'll get a new world heavyweight champion there. Well, it, it depends on if Roman's even, def- I would assume Roman defends the title on that day. Yeah. I mean, I've been saying this since he lost at WrestleMania. Roman gets to day 1000, but Cody beats him on day 1000 in Saudi Arabia. Hmm. Would suck because fa- his family wouldn't be there with him, but. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. There's so many different possibilities. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, let's go through some of the just the major highlights from Raw and SmackDown yep. as far as the stories go, because there's been a lot of crossover on each show lately, which I kind of hope it's going to end once post draft uh, takes place. And yes, settle. no, because when <laughs> when Triple H took over and was very more relaxed with the draft and the brand split mm-hmm. ratings went up. So hopefully yeah. specific brands don't hurt the ratings. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. The bloodline storyline still going on. It's still a big deal. It's like oh, yeah. the a story for raw and SmackDown right now. Uh, as we've seen the last couple of weeks, Cody for lead up to WrestleMania, it was Cody mm-hmm. aligning with Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn. It's like the three of them versus the mm-hmm. bloodline. Well, post WrestleMania, Cody's kind of uh, gone off into his own direction, his own storyline. As we talked about him and Brock Lesnar have a match coming up at backlash insert in replace of Cody Rhodes is now Matt Riddle, which makes sense. As we talked before, he does have beef with the bloodline going back yeah. to December when solo took him out. So it's been an interesting dynamic seeing Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Riddle all work together, trying to strategize and have different matches with the bloodline. So on Kevin SmackDown, does not like Riddle. I'll say that right now. <laughs> yes, I, I, it's been kind of funny. Kevin's like body language, like he's just kind of annoyed. Well, because like last night on Raw, when Sammy's like, "Man, I've had a hard night. I've been talking to the Usos and stuff," and Seth's like, or Kevin's like, "You think you've had a hard night? I mean, I'm with this guy." <laughs> I know it's been, it's very funny. So on SmackDown was a couple weeks ago. Solo spilled the table, threw the table on top of Riddle, mm-hmm. and then this past Friday on SmackDown. They had a match against each other, which ultimately, um, you know, Solo picked up the victory. It was interesting, though. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn were not there to help out. The Usos yeah. were there to help out with Solo. A two part here. Just your thoughts on Sammy and Kevin not there. I guess what Riddle Very hinted weird. earlier in the night that, oh, they're training for their match yeah. coming up in a couple of weeks. It was a quick throwaway line, but I guess that's to justify why they didn't get, he mm-hmm. weren't, they weren't there to help out uh, uh, Riddle. But I think the big complaint right now with the bloodline storyline is it's kind of like the same finish. A member of the bloodlines in the mm-hmm. match. And then the other members of the bloodline come in, interfere somehow when the ref's not looking or there's a ref bump, take out the opponent. And then that member of the bloodline picks up the victory. As we saw here, soul picks up the win over Matt Riddle. Mm-hmm. Usos come in, take out Riddle. Solo picks up the victory. What right. is your thoughts on, is that just getting kind of stale? It's just becoming too repetitive, predictable. And does that kind of hurt the bloodline as his intimidating faction? No, it makes the baby faces look like morons. Like I said, with Cody, <laughs> you know that these guys are going to come out and help the other. So where's your backup? Yeah. I mean, Finn was not wrong on raw when he said, you may be the world champion. If you had backup at WrestleMania, you know how the bloodline works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, okay. With that being said, was it last Monday on Raw? We saw Judgment Day and Bloodline in the ring mm-hmm. together. More or less worked out a deal. Like, let's take out our, let's help each other out, take out our, our enemies. Mm-hmm. So, more or less, we saw uh, Bloodline go up against Rey Mysterio and uh, uh, LWO, I believe. Or, uh, and then uh, um, Judgment Day, we're working on. Um, oh my god, I'm, I'm spacing already, but there was that crossover. You know, it was it was it uh Sammy and Kevin last week against Judgment Day? Yeah, it was Judgment Day against it's six man, Judgment Day against Sammy, Kevin, and, and uh, Riddle. Riddle, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yes, yeah. But that segment, I enjoyed the segment of the Judgment Day and the Bloodline working together. I like seeing Rhea staring down solo and kind of following him in the ring. That was just kind of cool. It was like <laughs> the two powerhouses. Well, if you think about it, that even continued this week on Raw 
when the Usos and Solo took on the LW on a six man. Yes, exactly. Well, in that the the meeting last week where they're like agreeing to help each other out, you know, Damian Priest is shaking the bloodline's hand. Mm. Finn had like a, a bit of reservation on his face, kind of like True. taken back, like, hmm. And then this week on Raw, Kathy Kelly's doing an interview backstage talking to Damian Priest about Bad Bunny and stuff. Finn still kind of has that look on his face. So do you think we're potentially seeing the breakup of the Judgment Day? In the I hope here? not, but it was weird because Finn did the whole, oh, hey, I'm standing right next to you. You can't say hi, I'm invisible. And yeah. then Damian basically tells him, hey, don't you have to go get ready for your match? Mm-hmm. I just missed him off. Yes. Well, there is something. I mean, if, if you really think about it, Damien is the de facto leader of this group. I mean, when they kicked out Edge, he was the guy because Finn was the new guy, even though they made Finn seem like the leader. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Maybe they want us to think there's dissension, but then it leads to nothing. Or maybe like Damien, Dominic, and Rhea all go to SmackDown and Finn gets drafted to Raw. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that in a little bit in our draft predictions. So uh, going back to the bloodline real quick. So this week we see Sami Zayn find Jey Uso backstage and he's talking. And, you know, they do have the match against each other, the tag title rematch Mm -hmm. on SmackDown this Friday. Is it this Friday? Night one of the draft. And last week on SmackDown, the Usos cut that promo and says they're tired of answering the question. What was it like to lose at WrestleMania? And it's like, you know the answer. We're pissed off, and they want to get this win back and get the titles mm-hmm. back to, to make Roman happy. On Raw this week, you know, Sammy confronts Jay and more or less says, like, dude, why are you doing this for Roman? Like, it's just weird. He's still trying to talk to him, even though the bloodlines beat down Sammy so much. And Sammy got his payback, his revenge. Him and Kevin beat the Usos for the tag titles. So where's your thoughts on seeing Sammy still trying to – Go after Jay. Is he? Do you think he's still trying to win him over and trying to help get him out of the bloodline? Like, like well, get him out of this 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 gang that he's been stuck in. Right. Because I think it's it's a couple of things. A. Jay didn't like him at first, but then when Jay finally came around, Sammy was like, "Oh no, this is yeah, no, this guy's now my friend. That I earned this guy's trust. I don't mm-hmm. want to lose a friend like that. That I actually earned his trust." And mm-hmm. so you have that. And then Sammy obviously saw everything that Roman did to Jay when Jimmy was gone. Mm-hmm. And then when Sammy didn't fall in line, what happened to him? So now he's just telling Jay, look, when I didn't fall in line, look what happened to me. If you don't fall in line or do exactly what Roman wants, could the same thing happen to you, even though you're a real family? Yeah. But it's I just, loved just- Jimmy getting mad at jay for talking to sammy yeah so the f- next segment backstage jay admitted he's talking to sammy and jimmy's like why you keep talking to him he he turned on us we can't trust him and solo's just standing there the whole time do you think solo well solo did the <laughs> he, he put his hand, hand out. out and was like he didn't say a word but he was like calm down calm down but I love Jay. His hands in his head conflicted. What if we don't win? What is it? What, what is Roman going to say? What is yeah. Roman going to do? What if? What if? What if? And it's like Jimmy shouldn't be yelling at Sammy or at Jay saying, why were you letting Sammy get in your head? He should be telling his brother, hey, we got this. Don't let him. You know, he's playing mind games to, to make you lose, not mind games to help you. Not mm-hmm. He's not really concerned. You know, he kind of said that. But he should also not be getting mad at him. He should be saying, hey, don't worry about it. We got what we got. We're going to win. Confidence. Yeah. Stay confident. He. That's the one thing that they didn't do. Jimmy yeah. never reinsured confidence in Jay. He just got mad that Jay spoke to Sammy. Yeah. And on a side note, later on in the night, as you mentioned earlier, Kevin and Riddle are backstage talking. Kevin's just like over talking to Riddle. Annexation of Puerto Rico. <laughs> yes. That great little line. giants. A great movie. Great 90s movie. Yes. So Sammy comes in and Kevin's like, where you been? And he's like, I was talking to Jay. And he's like, what? So he kind of had similar reactions. Like, why yeah. are you talking to the Usos? Why? Stop it. So do you see here? Kevin and Sammy might be breaking up already as a team. Do you think that's the case here? Like, like, well, I don't know. Early prediction. Do you think who's going to win on Friday for these tag titles? 
It's got to be Sammy and Kevin. They have to retain. They have to. Yeah. Because I think there's more money with the Usos losing and then yes. feeling the wrath. From what does Roman, Roman do when yeah. they lose? Yeah. I, 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 loved, people- I love serious riddle in this moment when he goes, well, hey, I know what you're going through. And he's like, what do you mean? You know what I'm going through. Remember RK bro? It was a little group with me and Randy. And, mm-hmm. and he goes and gets super meta real here and goes, everybody's just thought that at any time, in any moment, Randy was going to get tired of me and RKO me. But mm-hmm. he didn't because we're bros. And I look at you and Kevin and I can see you guys are real bros. And I don't think Kevin's really going to turn on you. So, yeah. So maybe they're just creating this little false uh, hope or, or, or just creating this tension. But at the end of the day, like they spent way too much time getting them back on the same page. Right. To like a month later, take it away from us. Because well, no, they want us to think that if one little thing goes wrong in that tag title match on Friday, could Kevin blow up on Sammy and be like, ah, I'm over it and yeah, like attack create, him or leave or something. Yeah. Create some drama. Yeah. But I, I think, yeah, they retain and then they finally leave the bloodline storyline and just get some new yes. challengers. Yes. I hope so. It's like. Post backlash, post draft, let them go to, you know, fresh new direction, fresh new opponents. My other thing is I think people are concerned that they might lose the titles is because they both don't travel to Saudi Arabia. They're worried that 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 maybe WWE will take the titles off them, put them back on the Usos. So the Usos can go to Night of Champions and defend the titles there. But they have so many other titles in existence. Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say having the tag titles not on that show is not a, a big deal. No. It's not going to make or break the show. The focus will be Roman styles and days, a new, and world new, heavyweight, new world heavyweight champion crown. They can throw a women's title match on there, an IC yeah. or us title or both. And, and the women's tag title. I mean, so they have plenty of titles to, to fill up that show, especially as, as you and I just said earlier, maybe they'll do a tournament for the new world championship. So that can fill up most of the night as right. far as content goes. So I'm with you there. But yeah, I was going to ask you real quick, your thoughts on Riddle, Matt Riddle, the last couple weeks, kind of a little more serious character tone, which I'm all for because I think he was getting a little too goofy last year. I'm kind of glad to kind of tone it down, kind of right. get more of a serious edge again. But I like that we still get goofy Riddle with serious moments thrown in. We get okay. the Riddle we know and love. Okay. But then... Hey, I've been through this. I've mm-hmm. experienced this. Here's what I can give you as far as my advice does go, but it's serious advice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, mm. um, last thing I just want to talk about with Judgment Day, and obviously this has to do with Cody Rhodes. So Cody Rhodes earlier in the night comes out, he's talking about his upcoming match with Brock Lesnar, talks about being in Chicago, where Hell in the Cell happened takes off his shirt, shows the scar. And it's like, you know, that hell in a cell match, you know, did a number on me. It's tough. I, I haven't watched back that match. Just more or less set up his match with Brock Lesnar and just finish the story. Finn right. Balor interrupts him, comes out. And as you mentioned earlier, if you had backup, you'd probably be world champion right now, WWE champion, which sets up a match for Cody versus Finn. And great match. I was surprised it didn't main event though, but it was like, what, towards the end of the beginning of the third hour. But um, yeah, well, the Bad Bunny stuff had to main event. Yeah, so great match. You know, Cody picks up the victory. Um, but in the main event, though, uh, Damian Priest, you know, he has a match. Um, sorry. Ray. With, yeah, with Ray Mysterio, which he just more or less threw the chair at him. Oh, right, <laughs> his, head. right his head. <laughs> oh, my God. Excuse me. So, yeah, it gets himself DQ'd. But Bad Bunny comes out and challenges. Who showed up with? Four minutes left in the show. Yeah, dude, like right at the very end. But he challenged Damien Priest to a San Juan street fight yeah. at WWE Backlash in Puerto Rico. So shocked it's not a tag match. Yeah, because I think a lot of people thought it was going to be Judgment Day versus Bad Bunny and maybe Ray or members of LWO. Right. But no, it, it's it's going to be just as far for right now, Damien cool. Priest versus Bad Bunny. Yeah, Wait, your they, thoughts on that. A whole lot of interference. Yes, I, I this match is probably going to be very overbooked. I imagine, yeah, Ray, LWO will get involved. I'm sure Dominic, yeah. uh, Finn will probably get involved. So there'll be a lot of overbooked interference to kind of make up for the fact that Bad Bunny, you know, is not a full-time wrestler to kind of cover up yep. or fill up moments in that match. But uh, 
That's gonna be interesting though. But then again, I, I'm that crowd's gonna love it. I mean, they're they're oh, they're they're the star main bad, but yeah, that's gonna be amazing. So what, what should main event? Bad Bunny and Damien or Cody and Brock? <sighs> My heart is saying Cody <laughs> because he is your main event guy. Yeah. But since it's in Puerto Rico, I can see why Bad Bunny goes last. And on a high note, with, yeah. with Bad Bunny celebrating the ring, the crowd, he's you know one of the biggest artists now, in the world the right now. Mm-hmm. In his home does state, Bunny, country. Does Bad Bunny beating Damian Priest hurt Damian Priest at all? Because if you did the tag match, you pin Dominic, and Dominic's still going to have the same heel heat he had before the match, no problem. Dom doesn't get hurt from it. Does this kind of hurt any momentum on Damian Priest, though, if he gets beat by Bad Bunny? Yeah. I, and I could see maybe whatever direction Damian Priest goes after, which Babyface challenges him after, that Babyface could totally rub it in his face. Like, dude, you lost to Bad Bunny. Ha, ha, yeah. ha. I can only see why that might be beneficial for a future Babyface opponent as ammo. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it, w- it will hurt him. A little bit, but then maybe Damian Priest uses that anger, or he can say, "Dude, you had Rey Mysterio and like LWO and all these guys attack me." True, like bad, yeah. You maybe you know Damian can spin it around, and be like, "You know how dare you know bad? How how dare you cheer Bad Bunny? He cheated to win, or something like that." So that can be kind of a way out of that. So I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how that goes with that one. A uh, couple more things real quick. I just want to get your thoughts on. So last week on Raw, Trish Stratus came out, explained herself why she turned on Becky Lynch, more or less saying she just felt Becky was ungrateful and didn't give her enough credit for more or less being the foundation and s- setting up where the women's division is now in present time that it was her. And she s- said it was her, not Lita right. that like, set the tone of what women's wrestling is in WWE for all these what last 20 years. Mm. She, she was the star. She set the tone, all that stuff. When she's backstage with Becky, Becky never thanked her for just everything she's done for the business. And, and I w- yeah. What are your thoughts on just that explanation for, I mean, for I liked it. Trish? Yeah, I did like it other than Trish trying to hold back a smirk the whole time she did that promo. Just trying I feel like not the to delivery. S- the delivery seemed a little quiet. I don't know. Maybe that's me. Well, I just felt. I, I felt like the, the delivery for me was okay, and that's mm-hmm. like being loose with my okay. <laughs> but I just felt like the whole time Trish was kind of like feeling good about herself and trying not yeah. to smile while giving that promo. And like she had like a slight smirk on her face, yeah. but not the smirk of "I'm the heel telling the truth" kind of thing. More mm-hmm. of a Oh yeah, this is going the way I thought it was. These people are booing the right way. These people are reacting how I wanted them to. I'm liking that. So she was trying to fight that back. I feel like so the the delivery wasn't all as good as it could have been. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you on that one. Um, and then this week she had another quick little backstage segment with, um, you know, with, with Kathy Kelly. Yeah, just, it was just uh, it was really quick. It was basically like. Oh, Becky's fallen to the pressure of being on top and a mom. Well, I got two kids and I can do it. So, yeah, where's Becky been the last couple of weeks? I know on Raw. Dealing or with an injury. There's gotcha. Okay. Foot. Last- Might be, I could be wrong. Foot, maybe. Okay. Because last week she tweeted out she wasn't going to be at Raw. So, I know Trish is trying to say, ah, oh, look, I took her out and she hasn't shown up since. And so, I'm all for Trish's explanation of feeling like people are not grateful for her accomplishments and setting the tone and you know, starting the women's revolution to where we're at today. My only concern is the plot hole is if you were trying to turn on Becky, why'd you still align yourself with her tagged with her and filled in for Lita? I know she said I was the one that took out Lita. Yeah. But like, it seems kind of weird that she wrestled in Lita's spot and more or less was how to help Becky in that match. But then at the last minute turned on her but you did. You reminded me she did get pinned, so maybe that was on purpose. All right, I'm gonna take the pin here, so they lose the tag titles. That's my way of sticking it to them. And FIFA reported Becky's dealing with a minor foot injury. Okay, but I, I that just it seems a little odd to me. Like the way you're gonna get revenge on Becky Lynch is you're gonna help her wrestle a match, but then at the very end you're gonna get pinned so it's like you're gonna go through the whole trouble getting beat up it's a new way of screwing her out of the belts yeah it just seems a little 
odd, but all right, it's in the past now, and I guess we'll get that <laughs> Lita, oh, excuse me, Trish Becky match at some point whenever Becky is, you know, one hundred percent. Could it so. also lead to a Trish Lita match because Trish attack Lita? True. Yeah, we can get that at some point, maybe. But the rumor uh, is, if all things go according to plan, Trish Becky SummerSlam. Yes, which we talked about before. Can right. they really hold off that long? That's a long. I time don't know. Away. Well, I would have said yes if Lita was or Trish wasn't on TV every week, but Trish is there every week, and Becky's the one not. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I wonder how they're going to keep us uh, engaged. Excuse me, right. engage all the way through SummerSlam. So, uh, all right, a couple more things, real quick. Uh, damage control. We touched on it last time. It looks like they're falling apart. Uh, EO last week earned like a number one contendership against Bianca for the title. Yep. This yesterday on Raw, she wanted her match with Bianca that night, but then Bailey jumped in and says, "Oh no, no, let's have a six woman tag." And then instead, it was announced EO versus Bianca will be at Backlash. So, and then on, on the actual show on Raw, it was let's see the six woman tag. It was Bianca, Liv Morgan, Raquel versus Damage Control. Baby faces here, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Raquel pick up the win. Mm-hmm. So it, it looks like I wonder is Bailey going to cost EO the title at some point and like turn on damage control? And, and that's how damage control, damage control finally breaks up. Just kind of they're hinting at something with Bailey. I still here. think it's Bailey goes baby face, Dakota and EO attack Bailey. I would love it. I think Bailey's due for a baby face yes. run. And I think they do it. The they, losses. Can, they can do it one of two ways. Mm-hmm. They can do it either where they're in a six woman tag. Bailey gets pinned and they're finally fed up and they attack Bailey. Or okay. they just fast track things to Monday or Friday. They're all in the back. It gets announced that Dakota and EO go to raw. Bailey goes to SmackDown and the Bailey's like, oh, we're not on the same show. And they look at Bailey and go, yeah, we don't care. And then they beat up Bailey then. <laughs> okay. And so then you have that, that sympathy for Bailey going to her new brand or whatever of, mm-hmm. oh, this, mm-hmm. this woman just got beat up by her quote unquote friends. Maybe we should show her some sympathy and cheer for her now. Gotcha. Okay. Well, two, two scenarios they can go with. I yeah. mean, who knows? Exactly. All right. Last thing I want to do with you is our predictions for the WWE draft. So it is coming up this Friday on SmackDown night one, part one, and then part two will be the following episode of Monday night raw. I know a lot of people online are doing different mock drafts and predictions. I think for this purpose, let's just keep it kind of loose and just throw out names. I think for the sake of, you know, just for conversation, maybe we'll start in the main event scene, maybe the mid card scene, okay tag titles and maybe NXT call-ups. I, 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 for me going into this draft, I hope they do something a little bit different than we've seen the last couple drafts. I hope, you know, maybe they introduce some more authority figures. Maybe Adam Pierce can be maybe raw specific, maybe a new authority figure for SmackDown. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that. You know, some sort of representation that, announces I'm representing raw. I select this person, this person, this person and SmackDown. I I select this person. Unlike Stephanie that said, I'm going to announce all the drafts, but the network is making the pick. Exactly. So something like that, change it up a little bit. Now, before we get into that, what are your thoughts on WWE piggybacking off the NFL draft that starts Thursday? Oh yeah, that is good timing. So they're actually going to go head to head draft versus draft night. Two of the NFL draft will be on Friday. Yeah, so night night one is Thursday, and that's rounds one and two, and right. then round three for the NFL draft will be Friday, and then it mm. usually picks it gets faster at that point. Right. It, uh, that, that, that's interesting. So it's a uh, it's a uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty chaotic weekend for draft picks. So, there's going to be podcasts reviewing NFL drafts, and there's going to be right. po- podcasts reviewing the WWE draft. So according to Fox Sports. This says round one of the NFL draft will be on Thursday. Then Friday will be rounds two and three. Oh, okay. So it's going to be two and three. Okay. Yeah. And then Saturday will be rounds four through seven where they speed through everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. By that point. <clears throat> yeah. Again, since I am a Niner fan, we got Brock Purdy last year, the last pick in the draft. So uh, I'm hoping we get some uh, another diamond in. And diamond here's, here's yeah. one bad thing for WWE. Now, what? 
What channel is the draft going to be on? That's what I want to know. The NFL draft. ESPN and NFL Network. Yeah, that's I mean, what I was thinking. Because like the it starts an hour before SmackDown. Mm. It starts at 7 Eastern. SmackDown starts at 8 Eastern. Hmm. So that's the one thing. It's like they were going to have the leg up. I know like what? Last year they had like 20 million people watching. Yeah. So, ooh. He's need oh, Paul Heyman to go. It is, NFL, it is NFL Network. Yeah. ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes. Oh, damn. So I don't know if ABC is going to have both night one and night two, but at least night one is on ABC, which is direct competition to Fox and SmackDown. Yeah, and they're probably on the ESPN Plus app as well, I'm guessing. I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it, yeah. Wow, so, okay. I know a lot Man. of people are going to go, oh, they're down for the draft. The ratings, I because I could see a, a number with that, even though it's night two of the draft. If there's some big names not picked in, in the first round, of the NFL draft, I can see night two doing a really, really good number. Yeah, exactly. So mm, I might hurt WWE, okay. but <laughs> well, and I'm, I'm assuming for raw, they'll, it'll probably be the same in the past where like, they'll get three picks to every SmackDown's two picks. Like I since, don't, again, they haven't said, they haven't weird, said the rules, they haven't, huh? maybe they'll announce them on the bump Wednesday. Okay. Okay. They like to do stuff for the bump. Okay. Well, so let's uh, let's go down the list, kind of like the main event scene. I think you and I both already agree. We mentioned this earlier. I think Roman's going to be number one. He's going to stay on SmackDown. It kind of makes sense. That's his, been his show for the last couple of years now. Well, I might refute that. Really? Okay. Maybe go Roman goes number two. So say Raw gets the first pick mm-hmm. and they pick Seth Rollins. And their excuse is, well, we want a new title with fresh lineage that we can build up and brand ours as our own. So we are just going to give SmackDown Roman Reigns. <laughs> okay. And we want to start our own thing with a new belt. Interesting. See, I was thinking Raw's first pick would be Cody Rhodes. Well, Cody um, or Seth, I guess you could say. But, but then again, mm, I want Cody to go on the brand that Roman goes to. See, that's the thing, too. It's like I'm thinking Cody should be on the same brand that Roman's on and has that chase. The only thing is Cody could be on Raw and then maybe he wins the Royal Rumble, challenges Roman and therefore crosses over. But then again, it goes back to what I said earlier. I want separate firm rosters, no crossover. With the Rumble, you can you have that excuse, though. Like Rhea did. Yeah, if he, Rhea. Win, if he wins the Rumble again, you do have that excuse. Yeah. So, I mean, I, people I, don't like to bring this guy up, but Chris Benoit, 2004, or yeah, 2004, he went from SmackDown to Raw and won the world title at WrestleMania. Yeah, that's true. So, I, I think Roman goes SmackDown. I'm, I, I have a feeling Cody would be drafted by Raw, but I'm with you. I want him to go to SmackDown just to chase Roman. I would like to see Seth. Stay on Raw for that world title, mm-hmm. and then therefore Seth, you know, since he's married to Becky, I imagine Becky will probably stay on Raw. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, I I think Bianca will stay on Raw. Rhea Ripley will go to SmackDown since they are the both their respected champions. I don't mm-hmm. see any change there. Let me ask you this now: There's a two part. Rhea Ripley, do you think all Judgment Day should go to SmackDown, or do you think we see a breakup there at some point? Uh, what I alluded to earlier. Okay. Old Dom and uh, Damien goes with Rhea. Okay. But then Finn gets taken to, to Monday Night Raw. Okay. And for that world title picture, which I'm mm-hmm. all for. Okay. Now with Bianca I knew you, was, on Raw. you were going. Yep. I knew you were okay. going this way. <laughs> all right. Everyone seems to think Street Profits are going to get break, broken up here. Are you for uh, Montez Ford staying with his wife on Raw? Begins a singles push. And, Mon- and then Angela Dawkins. Goes to SmackDown, begins his own singles run. I mean, it sucks for Dawkins, but I think that is actually the right move. Because okay. as we've seen over the last, what, year? Mm-hmm. Street Profits are the filler match every single yeah. week, basically. And I know... There's not much more to do with them as a team, unfortunately. They've accomplished it all. They've won yeah. every title. And I know, was it Fightful reported that Vince McMahon made some changes to Raw this week? I think what Piper um, Niven... Candice LeRae so, was supposed to have so a match. Fightful reported changes were made. PW okay. Insider actually had the details. 
Okay, so it was like so, a Piper Nivens match, right? No, Kansas it was it was Kenneth Slurry and Piper Niven were supposed to be in a segment with the Trish segment backstage. Okay, okay. And it just got turned into a Trish interview. Gotcha. They also stated that some of the finishes got changed as far as Vince didn't change who were winning, but Vince changed how the finishes happened on okay. some matches. Nothing pertaining to Bad Bunny, Ray, and Dom. And then Ray and Damien got changed at all. Okay. And Zelina Vega was there, but not seen on TV. And okay. Vince also added the two minute Street Profits versus Cedric and Shelton match. Now, that was a Vince move. That that was a match added by Vince. Do you think they added that match? Because looking ahead, we predict Street Profits are probably going to get broken up. Do you think they wanted. The Street Profits on TV to have at least yes. one more tag tag match together to keep it fresh in people's mind. Like, hey, mm. this is a, a popular tag team because you know you get what I'm saying. Didn't Tori like, mention, hey, what if they get split up on Friday? So I can see why they added a Street Profits match on Raw just to remind people, hey, that they're a popular tag team. Yeah, and it was like a minute and fifty seconds or something yeah, like that. So I think I think that. I can. I'm okay with adding that match just to remind people that hey, Street Profits are a tag team, and then therefore, what? Less than five days later, they get broken up. Yeah. It adds the drama, and because it's fresh in our mind, like yeah, we just saw them wrestle this past Monday. So I'm all for that change and adding that in. Um, I'm excited to see what Montez Ford can do in a singles run. I think if, if let him if, let him the move. Elimination Chamber match, I think mm-hmm. really opened people's eyes. Yes, yes. So. Now, okay, let's talk about mid card titles. I'm all for Gunther going to Monday Night Raw, just fresh opponents, fresh matchups. Oh, yeah. And therefore, I think Austin Theory should go to SmackDown. I think he needs a fresh change of scenery, getting a little stale with him. What are your thoughts? Are you cool with the mid card titles changing spots? Yeah, I think it's long overdue. We've seen the IC title and the US title on their respective brands for quite a while now. Yeah. So it's like, okay, switch them up. It. Doesn't really matter. They're basically the same belt anyways, but it's more or less of switching who has the title than the titles themselves at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now when it comes to the main event scene, we need fresh opponents for Roman people. He hasn't fought or hasn't defeated yet or hasn't fought in a long time. And then also with the world heavyweight title now in the picture, Whoever wins that title is going to need some fresh opponents as well. Um, Bobby Lashley has been on Raw for a long time. He has not been on SmackDown. I would love to see him go to SmackDown and face Roman Reigns. Bobby, now, Lash- I think, Bobby I think, Lashley not only yeah. has been on Raw for a long time, he's never been on SmackDown since he came back in 2018. Yeah, okay. I would love to see him versus Roman. I think that's a great big yeah. match pay-per-view I know. I think last time we talked about it, how there was reports of the her business going to come back, but now those plans have been thrown out the window. I mentioned with that story, I wish we could see at some point the her business versus the bloodline. Maybe that'd be, cool. that'd be cool. Maybe Bobby goes to SmackDown. Maybe that's a good reason to bring back the her business. He needs some backup to take on the bloodline. I think that could right. be a great summertime matchup there. So I could see Bobby going to SmackDown just to have Roman, to face Roman. Um, Let me see. Who else? Uh, I was trying to think. Uh, Let's see. Gunther goes to Raw. Austin Theory, SmackDown, Bobby Lashley. So if Gunther goes to Raw, do Vince and Kaiser go with him? Have to, right? I would think so. You keep Imperium together. Yeah. Now, Brawling Brutes, Sheamus. Should Sheamus go to Raw? I I think it's been a minute since he's been on Raw. I think that world title. Now, here's the thing. Now you're saying, well, this person's on SmackDown. Should we move him? This person's on SmackDown. Should we... You can't move everybody from Raw to SmackDown, SmackDown to Raw. Then you're exactly. just going to have the same roster on the other brand. Exactly. It's almost like you just got to take half and right. the other half. So that way, then, you know, half and half, you know, fresh matchups there. So I... <sighs> I almost wonder if Drew should go to Raw. Like, like going back to earlier when we talked about the world title possible right. 
people who can hold that title at some yeah, point. I would, I would say Drew to Raw. If 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 Raw's getting the new belt, I would put Drew on the new on Raw. It's almost like everyone that Roman beat in the last year <laughs> should go to Raw. So it's yeah, it's gonna be Seth over there. It's gonna be Finn, Drew, uh, uh, um, uh, who else he beat? You know, maybe Cody could stay there. I don't know. Logan but I think Paul. Logan Paul. Well, here's an interesting thing with Logan Paul. So when they did the big old graphic on television last Friday and on Raw, and they had all the wrestlers that are available for the draft, Logan Paul wasn't on that. But then today they posted a graphic that said, who's going to go where in the draft? And that graphic has on it. So I can find it really fast. Somebody sent it to me. Going, okay. Hey, why, why is this person on it? So on this graphic is Rhea, Cody, Roman, Brock, Bianca, Logan Paul. Oh. It says, who's the number one pick, or number one overall pick? <laughs> Logan, Logan was not on that initial graphic of, okay. these are everybody available for the draft. Mm-hmm. Well, I think they probably put it out there so it gets us people talking, like, oh, my yeah. God, who's this person they added? So I, I think... Trying to think who else kind of main event scene needs a fresh scenery. You know, switch. Uh, I can maybe see them switching Edge over to Fridays. Yes, that'd be good. Randy Orton, if he's once he's healthy, I can see him staying on Raw for the world title. But then again, well, that's a fresh matchup. Him and Roman, we have not seen. Uh, and I think, I think the best way to bring back Randy. Is just a random RKO on Riddle. So wherever Riddle goes, I think that's where Randy goes. Randy not on the draft list. He's not on the graphic. Okay, Randy's good. not on the graphic. Okay, I'm fine with that. So Randy does not get drafted. So we talked about Judgment Day. I think Finn could break off. Rhea and the rest can go to SmackDown. Now, Factions, LWO. I think they all stay together. And Ray, do you think they go to Raw or do they stay on SmackDown? Ooh, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. I'd keep them on SmackDown. Okay. Is there any teams that you think should go to NXT or anyone that should go back to NXT? So you think they're going to draft for NXT as well or draft? Or, just, <laughs> or are actually, we just getting NXT call-ups? I, I saw someone say, like, Hit Row should go back to NXT. <laughs> oh, to Lord. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about tag teams. Now, we don't know what this, the state of the tag teams right now as far as will Sammy and Kevin both have the Raw and SmackDown tag titles, but will that get merged into one new belt design? Yeah, that they haven't said anything. And whoever the tag champions, I would love it, just whoever the tag champions just floats in between both shows. Well, I mean, you're, gonna do, you're, you're at least going to do that with the women's tag titles. Yeah, so I'm fine with doing it with the men's too, just yeah. because... They got tag teams, but I think not a lot to make it one. Exactly. Sh- you dedicate to one show each. I think having multiples per show. I, I think Viking Raiders should probably should go to Monday Night Raw and change of scenery there. That'd be nice. I can see. Let's see who's left over on Raw right now. Now, Maybe Xavier Woods mm-hmm. posted a video that really kind of made it seem like. Him and Kofi are going to separate brands or could be going to separate brands. Biggie not on the graphic. He's not getting drafted. Okay. Because I was going to say, it could be cool maybe one and day. And Woods is day. pushing. He literally posted a video today. I will win a singles championship. Whether Kofi and I are on the same brand after the draft or not, I will win a title. Maybe they split them up. Yeah, Xavier goes to Raw. Kofi stays on SmackDown. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Okay. I think Alpha Academy, because right now you got Maxine Dupree still seducing. Who, who gets Otis? <laughs> Otis. Otis. Maybe, maybe I would like to see Alpha Academy stay together, but I could see them getting broken up. Like maybe Otis and Max Male Models all go to SmackDown. Maybe Chad stays on raw and then can really I'd love that for Gable. Yeah, can go on a tear for like the US or uh right. for the IC title at some point if if Gunther's over there. Um let's see other tag teams that really stand out. We said LWO already. 
So is Legado del Fantasma the name just done for right now? Seems like it. Okay. And they got new music too this week yes, as well. New last theme night song. Raw. I like Legato's old theme song though. So but, did I. Oh. Uh, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I know there's so many people we can refer to. I'm just the trying OC? to think. Of, which one? The OC. Oh, yeah. Even okay. though AJ's been out, he was on the graphic. Because other people I, injured, like Randy, like R Truth, like Tommaso Ciampa, not on the graphic. AJ on the graphic. Okay, I think the OC should stay where AJ's at. So if that's raw yeah. with the world type, I think so. Do you think they um, keep Meechin, Mia Yim? She's been doing her own thing. Even though yeah. Gallows and Anderson have been pulled from TV, she's still being used most weeks. Okay, well, let's talk about the yeah the women's division. Uh, we saw Selena Vega last week challenge Rhea for a match at Backlash. Oh, don't get me started uh, on that. <laughs> I want the match because I'm Puerto Rican and the show's in Puerto Rico. What'd you do to earn it? I'm Puerto Rican. <laughs> so I could see, I, I, I would like to see Rhea get some fresh opponents so I can see maybe. Maybe, yeah, Mia Yim could go to SmackDown. Maybe Shotzi goes to Raw. Can. Candace and Johnny Gargano, I think, would be kind of cool. Maybe a fresh start over on SmackDown. Smackdown. That'd be nice. Yeah. Um, Karrion Cross and Scarlet go to Raw. I think. I think guys that we think could be in the main event scene, but Roman just maybe wouldn't get to them at some point, should go to Raw for that world title yeah. picture. So Karrion Cross is a perfect example of that. Um, I'm trying to think for else in the women's division. Um, I'm pulling up you, the roster you right Oscar now. think Asuka should go to SmackDown? And do Asuka Rhea? Mm. Charlotte. I think Charlotte should go to Raw. Yeah. Charlotte's taking some time off. So yeah, she's she'll get drafted, awesome. but we won't see her for a while. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Shayna and Ronda, we don't know about them. They've both been injured. Um, and then you have Chelsea and Sonya. Mm-hmm. Or Chelsea's been a well. Chelsea's been on both brands, and mm -hmm. Sonya's been more SmackDown. I could say Chelsea and and Sonya to Raw. Hmm. Okay. Um. How about NXT call ups? No. Well, we <laughs> there was one that I was very, very like, oh, this guy's getting called up. But after tonight, not sure. Tyler Bate. Yeah. So. Bate. So I don't know if you watched NXT. I caught the end of it. So he was talking to. Um, so, uh, yeah, Tyler Bay was talking to Wesley, who was North mm -hmm. American champion. Next week, Wesley will be challenged for the title by Drew Gulak. Drew Gulak mm -hmm. has Charlie Dempsey in his corner. So Tyler Bate walks up and goes, hey, you want help next week? You know, you may need some backup. And Wesley thinks about it for a second and goes, well, yeah, Charlie Dempsey, you never know what's going to happen when he's out there. I think. Why are they teasing something with, and maybe this could all lead to Tyler Bate helping Wesley and then wanting a North America title shot. So why are they teasing future storylines with Tyler Bate in NXT after the draft is over? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was one that I thought could happen where now I'm on the fence more leaning towards maybe he's not coming up yet. What about Ilya Dragunov? Cause he got attacked by die Jack. <laughs> I I think he needs more work on it. I don't think he's ready for the main roster. And this is okay. just me saying it. Yeah. I don't like the I think he's one of the better in ring wrestlers they have. Mm. I hate the gimmick. <laughs> I hate the whole the whole composer. Conductor, yeah, composer conductor. thing. Especially someone that did music growing up. Yeah. Like, no guy. <laughs> wave his arms. You know who's uh, coming up though? Them them boys with the fishes. <laughs> It's so pretty, pretty deadly. Pretty deadly got thrown in the car trunk and then thrown in the ocean or the river or a creek or whatever you want to call it out there in Orlando. So that was one way or, to really write them off. Of NXT. You would think this was an episode of Impact. <laughs> so, yeah, I think they're definitely going to call up. Now, Braun Breaker, Carmella Hayes. Now, it was announced they're going to have a match at Battleground, Main event. which End is going to be Memorial Day weekend in the yes. May. Head to head with double or nothing. So literally head to head because the time and everything I think is the same. Yeah. So do you think now everyone thought Braun was going to get drafted, but 
the draft will be done by three weeks after that. So yeah. maybe Braun's well a late, late call up. I don't see Carmelo how he's losing. I think Carmelo retains. Right. Same. So maybe Braun, yeah, is a late addition at some point to Raw or SmackDown. Or maybe he does get drafted and they start teasing, oh, Braun Breaker, he's on SmackDown. Well, could he bring the NXT title to SmackDown as well? Okay. Yeah, like, creates some I drama. I don't know. And uh, Cora Jade was at Raw yesterday, recorded a match for main event. Yes. Cora J probably, I know someone said, oh, she could be the next, they view her as the next Sasha Banks. So, mm. <laughs> which I think is too early to tell. Or, yeah. But the, I Joe think Gacy Co- was as well. Okay. So maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe Cora Jade can get drafted too. Um, Zoe Stark, I think definitely is. Due oh, yeah. To, yeah. So, and then Zoe Stark is someone that they need to keep around for a long time because she's great in the ring. Her yeah. mic working is getting better. And mm-hmm. as I saw over Mania Weekend with some of like your interview and others, she's yeah. great talking to the media. She absolutely is. I'm a big fan of Zoe Stark. Just her in Yeah, she's and, someone they need to keep around for multiple different reasons. Yes. And she might be someone who wins like a, a, a championship at some point, but she's more valuable making her opponents look good as a great yes. dance partner in the ring. That's she's what a, her value. I mean, is. I don't want to say it, but she's like the next Natalia. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know if Roxanne Perez can maybe get called up. I think it's too soon. She needs a lot more promo work. Yeah. Her promos a lot of times really comes off like I'm remembering my lines. I'm doing the lines and I'm saying what they (laughs) tell me to say. My my main thing is like I I hope they do have quite a bit of NXT call ups just because NXT's roster is pretty stacked right now. And I think by drafting some people that will free up some spaces, give some TV time to some people there. They announced a match next week, JC Jane, Gigi Dolan. Maybe one of them gets drafted, and then mm. they just have a match on NXT to have the match to blow it off, okay. blow off the storyline. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's key for NXT, just to fresh also, up some, open up some spots. Two people that have been in NXT for way too long now that just <laughs> Katana Chance or whatever you want to call her, Casey Canzaro and oh, Kaden yes. Carter. They've been down there for so long. Like five not, years now. Like, I get while people go, oh, they need a little more promo work or they need character. They're not going to get any better than they are working NXT and the same people every week. So put them on the road. Put them in fresh places with fresh faces to get better. And they're an established tag team. Yes. They those tag titles. Exactly. So like, you can only grow so much working with the same people at a lesser level than you. Like at, at this point, I don't think they can get much better in NXT than they are. They can get better overall. Yeah. But like when you're, when, when you're working with people at a lesser skill level than you, mm-hmm. you can't progress. Yeah. No, I, I, that's true. Like when I play basketball, like if I played with guys way better than me, I felt like I got better by being around them. So yeah, mm. I totally get you. It, it elevates your performance. Totally. So it's a, it's going to be exciting. I, I think there's so many different directions they can go. And I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited for the draft. I, I it, it's going to be a fresh start. I hope, I know Vince still has input, as you say, working remotely, right. but I'm excited for this draft for, for Hunter and mm. more, more of his vision moving I got, forward. I got another NXT name that's been rumored for a while. Cameron Grimes. Oh, abs- yes. Big time. He is. And who should before. not get drafted from NXT? Paulo Cruz and Dijak. Keep them on NXT. They've mm-hmm. been on main roster. They've done stuff. It didn't. Eh, whatever. They're doing great stuff in NXT now. I forgot one other person. Yeah. Like, where do you think LA Knight should oh, go? Oh, man. Raw. <laughs> Raw. Okay. I'm on Raw. Yeah. I think he, yeah. he'll fit well on, on Raw. And that's the other thing, too, with the, with the new championship, that Money to Bank briefcase. Whoever wins that this summer could show I think, up either place. Yeah, exactly. But most well, likely, well, it's gonna be that world heavyweight title they're gonna well, go after. Here's the question though, because I remember back in the day, they used to go. Well, didn't they do a, at least one or two years? You win it, and you can challenge your champion. Oh so yeah, they, yeah. Will they do it like that, or could it be money? Mister Money in the Bank can show up anywhere. I would really like that if Mister Money in the Bank can show yeah. up anywhere. Just more drama. Or Mrs. Money in the Bank. (laughs) 
Exactly. So, all right. Well, we'll see how it goes. And uh, I, I, we should do a recap at some point oh, yeah. as well of all the picks. And so it's, I love this, all this fantasy talk. So uh, on that note, let's start wrapping things up. Uh, Tim, where can the Clicksters find you online? You can find most of my work over at Pro Wrestling Unlimited, whether that's on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited, on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. And then you can find some of my other stuff, my graphic design work and my video game streams on Twitch and so forth, at mm-hmm. Timmy Buddy. Yeah, I'm doing a bunch of different things, a bunch of different places. You're the man, Tim. Like I said, <laughs> you're the hardest working man in pro wrestling news entertainment all that stuff so uh uh i i think it's safe to say you're the official unofficial third man brother of in the <laughs> click here as well you're my go-to fill in when i need it so thank Anytime. you again for making making the time uh i'm baby huey follow me on facebook at baby huey official twitter and instagram at baby huey 83 for everything else just follow us on social at in the click subscribe to us where we get your podcast at and please Subscribe to us on YouTube as well. Watch the videos. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Email us in the click at gmail.com. And on that note, let's go home. And that's the bottom line because Huey said so.